How do you conceive of your, your vocation? Uh, how do you think of your call? Yeah, I thought a lot about that actually. I did, I have over the years kind of revisited that. I think most people do, you know, they have a good sense of calling and then life experiences take them in a direction and then they circle back to the question again. Uh, I would say uh, my central calling is to be a bridge between the world of the academy, the world of ideas, great texts, great ideas, and the world of, uh, of uh, ordinary people and uh, the church. Yeah, yeah. And so I have to kind of live in both worlds, and that's a pretty demeaning, and I try to write in both worlds too, but that's where I think my sweet spot is. Comment on that. What, what is... What is uh What's the challenge that you face as sort of living in that middle space? Well, I mean, on the one hand, uh, the reward system, the, the culture of higher ed is constantly encouraging uh, only the capacity to speak to people like yourself. And so you write your peer-reviewed articles and you work on your books and that sort of thing, which I've done. But it can be a pretty incestuous world. The language you use, the in-group vocabulary, for example, the ideas that become incredibly inaccessible and often irrelevant to ordinary people. So you've got to negotiate that world and live in that world, but figure out how to distill it. And so you can communicate to a larger world that needs to learn from these ideas and adapt them and uh, grow in uh, a wisdom. So I want to make those, at least in part, uh, accessible. So I do try to live in both worlds as best I can. Comment on cri Christian wisdom and, and, and the church and why, um, what's, the, what's the relationship of, of uh, the church to sources of ancient wisdom, contemporary wisdom? What's the need for the church? Yeah. For well, actually, right I was initially inspired to get my PhD, assuming I was going to go back into the church and be a pastor because early on in my Christian life, I was converted when I was 20, by the time I was 24, 25, some of my heroes, many of my heroes, were kind of Christian intellectuals who were pastors. And some of the best theology to come out of the church, or I should say, some of the best ch theology to come out of the uh, uh, great teachers of the Christian movement have been pastors. John Calvin, uh, Jonathan Edwards, Augustine, Chrysostom, the Cappadocian Fathers, m many of these people were pastors. Ambrose was a pastor, on and on I could go. Athanasius was a bishop for 45 years. Right. So these folks knew how to preach and they knew how to speak to lay people. I mean, think about it. John Calvin preached over 200 sermons a year for 15 years, and yet we read him as a scholar. So their example really inspired me to think about becoming at least somewhat learned. I'll, you know, I'll never be as learned as they are. I feel like I'm a little asteroid uh, revolving, orbiting around Jupiter when I study these, the, these folks. But uh, their example really inspired me to want to pursue something of the same calling, only in a, a much more modest kind of way. So, I mean, uh, it, it's only been in the last maybe 200 years that uh, the wisdom is, uh, of the church has become a little bit more isolated in the academy and I'd like to see it brought forth and made more accessible to ordinary people again. Yeah. At least that's one of the things I'd like to do, and not the only thing.